Hey Damien here for Automo Superstore. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install new brake pads and rotors to your car. And if you stick around, you'll also see me change over to a larger four piston caliper as a performance upgrade. And I'll also be bleeding the brakes. Let's get stuck in. Now I'm gonna be using DBA's pads and rotors. And in particular, I'm using the 4000 series. These are a high carbon rotor, more suitable for track use. Outside of that, I'm using DBA's Extreme Series pads. These are a great pad. I've actually already got them in my car. I've been using them on the standard rotors and brakes. They're very low noise, like they're almost silent, but their grip and feel on the pedal is amazing. And honestly, if you wanna do the single most significant upgrade you can do, just upgrade, even if you're using regular rotors or whatever, just use the Extreme Series pads. These are an amazing pad, they're awesome. I'm also gonna be using Motul 660 brake fluid. Uh, the 660 denotes temperature, and this is one of their highest in their range, and obviously for track use, you want high temperature brake fluid. Now, besides regular tools to jack your car up and remove your wheels and stuff, there are some specific tools and bits and pieces you'll need to do brake work on your car. You'll need primarily a way to get the pistons back into the calipers so that you can get old, thin, worn out pads out and remove thin, worn out rotors and replace them with thicker pads and thicker rotors. So the pistons need to be fully retracted back into the caliper. Now, depending on what kind of car you've got, that tool's going to be a bit different. This is a retraction tool that uses these two plates to push the pistons apart. And that works in multi-piston calipers like this one here from Brembo that's got four pistons in there and this tool works fine for that sort of application. On my Audi, I know for a fact that the rear calipers on that one, it's a single piston and it needs to be rotated for it to move back into the caliper. And for that, I've got one of these tools here from our website and it's got different types of pins on there and you put a socket into this, you put it into the piston and you rotate that and it pushes the piston back in. There's also electronic handbrake pistons and they're a bit more tricky. With certain vehicles, you can actually control that from the steering wheel and set the car into a servicing mode and that will retract the pistons for you so you can get your pads out. There are other cars, I know certain late model uh, Volkswagen Audi vehicles that you actually have to use a diagnostics tool to go into that service mode. So check your service manual before you uh, start with this project to make sure that you can actually re retract the pistons in the calipers on your car. Outside of that, some other things you'll need. You'll need some copper grease. I've got some stuff from Penrite from our site. You'll need some lithium grease, and this is from CRC. I've got that from our site. What's also handy is a little brake bleeding kit. This is just the cheapest, simplest one we sell. I'm just gonna be using that on my car. There are later model cars that require a more complex bleeding system than this. Again, check your manual for that before you get started on the project. But let's get stuck in. So I'll start with the rear brakes. In here, I've already jacked the car up and taken the wheel off, obviously. Very first thing I wanna do on this, and it's not required for every car, but I'm just gonna release the handbrake cable, and that's this one here, this little ball behind this little bracket here. I'm just going to, I'm just gonna lever this forward, just take the cable out like that, and that releases the handbrake cable from this side and from the other side. So next up, I just wanna take the caliper off. This is the hanging bracket. This is connected to the hub, and the caliper itself is connected with two bolts at the back here and here to come off to change your pads. But I wanna get this off because I need to wind the piston back. It is a single piston caliper, and this is pretty common on virtually every vehicle, unless you've got something exotic like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or something. So there's our single piston there. That's that handbrake attachment I was talking about. This can just hang to the side for the moment. And here are our pads. Let's take those out. Now to get the hanging bracket off, there are two bolts, two M14 spline bolts into the hub from the rear here and here. On many cars, you can just undo and take the rotor out and it will come out from behind. On this one, because it's got the big three 10 millimeter ventilated rotors, I actually have to take the carrier bracket off to get the rotor off. So to get the rotor off, there's one little star head screw in here that holds the rotor in. It's gotta be very careful not to strip it as you're trying to get it out. It's a good idea to replace this with a new one when you put the new rotor on. So 
So here's our hanger and it has these two slide pins like this. There's one and there's two. And so you just want to do an inspection to make sure that these rubber boots aren't split or cracked. These are both still all right. I'm going to take these over to the sink and wash them out with degreaser. I'll take the rubber boots off and wash them all inside and out before I re-grease them to put them back in. Okay, so here's our cleaned up slide pin and our cleaned up carrier. The slide pins go in and out of these holes and that's what the caliper sits on as it slides forward and backwards. And what's important is every time you do a brake service is to pull all these apart, clean these up, clean all the dirt and grit and gunk off them, inspect them and make sure they're in good condition and then re-grease them to put them back in again. For that, I'm just gonna be using some of the CRC brake and caliper grease. Just make sure it's spread all the way around. boot on, slide that home, and that's ready to go back onto the car. Now what's important to note is when you put your calipers back on again, that the two bolts that bolt them, you need to get new ones. They're a one-time use, as is the little grub screw that holds your disc rotor on. All right, so it's time to put our rotor on. I've given this a wipe down with some brake clean actually quite a lot of crud on a brand new disc, so it's important to do that. So now we've got to wind the piston back into the caliper. Because we've taken out pads that are worn, the piston's usually out, and so when you put thicker pads in, you've got to push the caliper piston back into the bore so that you've got room to put the thicker pads onto your thick new rotor. Now, you can use a tool like this, and this has got all these different keys in there. Find one that fits inside the slot in your piston. See, there's a couple of slots here in this piston that this fits into. And then you can turn this manually to wind it in. This particular one is a little bit troublesome, and so I've got this more elaborate tool here. It's similar, but it butts up against here on the opposite side so that it can force against that to push the piston back into its caliper. So let me slot this on here. So here's our DBA Extreme brake pad. I'm just gonna put a little bit of copper grease on the back. And careful not to touch the pad itself now. It slots in there. One slots in the front. And then our caliper comes around. Hopefully, I've wound it back enough. It goes back on, there we go. We'll grab our new hardware. And we'll tighten these down, and then we'll reconnect the handbrake cable. our handbrake cable back in by levering it forward. All done. So here are our two different calipers, the stock one off the car and the Brembo four piston caliper I'm gonna be putting on. They're roughly about the same physical size actually, so the Brembo doesn't actually look like much of an upgrade when you look at it on surface value, but let me show you where it's a real big gain. First of all, the stock caliper, while being very large and very heavy, it has one single piston. You can see it in there, it's a very large diameter, single piston on one side. Whereas 
This caliper here, it has two pistons on this side and then another two pistons on this side. So it's a four piston caliper. And what that means is the pistons push evenly on both sides and pushing both pads onto either side of the disc as opposed to one clamping across like so. That's a big advantage and it spreads the load across the pad. The other big thing is the size of the pad. So, ugh, heavy. You can see in there, the actual stock size pad and compare it to that one. So the pad size is much, much, much larger. So four pistons, much larger pad size. Then there's the actual overall weight. Check this out. The stock caliper with pads and brake line, 8.7 kilograms. The Brembo caliper with pads and lines, 5.5 kilograms, that's a big difference. So 3.2 kilograms off each corner of the front of the car in unsprung weight. That's a really good gain there. So let's get these fitted up to the car. Now the caliper's held on with two bolts. They're 21 millimeter on this model, one at the top and one at the bottom. I'm just going to set the caliper under here for the moment. So we'll clean up this little wire wheel. And some of the Penrite copper grease. So this style of caliper makes it really easy to insert and change pads. They just slot in through here and there are drive pins that hold it in place. So you don't actually have to remove the caliper to put the pads in. So we're just gonna apply a little bit of copper grease to the back of the pads. I'm just doing it in two spots here because that's where the pistons are. And making sure that the pad material is pointing towards the rotor. Slide that one in. So there are two pins and one spring, and that's all that holds these in. One pin goes in the top. On the bottom. So we're changing over the front brake line. And so this one's attached to the stock caliper. I'm gonna undo it here, remove this, and then put the new line in and reconnect. The new line's in with the retaining clip. I've just put this to the side and I've done it just so it stops leaking for a minute. Now I can transfer it across to the new line. There's always gonna be a leak because we're gonna to have to bleed the brakes no matter what because the new calipers obviously have no fluid in them. A 
Okay, so now we've changed all of the hardware. The last thing to do in my project is to bleed the front brakes because I've changed calipers and lines and they're full of air. Here's a little diagram showing you basically how it works. Your brake master cylinder reservoir is on the firewall high up. It's right in front of where your brake pedal is on the car and it holds a reservoir of fluid. This is the depiction of a brake caliper on the side and the two pistons there and a little thing showing that it fills with fluid also because that's what pushes the pistons out with the line that connects them. Here's the bleed nipple at the top of the caliper and then a little hose line and a little reservoir to connect externally so that you can bleed all of the air out of it and a little bit of the fluid as well. So the process is really simple. You need your little 11 mil spanner on your bleed nipple with your hose and your reservoir connected. I tell my partner mate Michael, who's gonna give me a hand to do this, uh, I tell him to push down on the brake pedal, then I release the nipple once there's pressure on and it forces all of the air and some fluid out. Then I close the nipple and let him then release pressure. As long as the nipple is closed when he releases pressure, it can't suck air back in again. Pretty simple process, this is how it's done. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. And up. And pump. Got a pedal? Yep. Great. So you'll have to top up the master cylinder for all of the fluid that comes out of the calipers to offset the fluid that comes out. There you go, how to install brakes on your car. So jump on our website, put your own vehicle's details in and find the appropriate parts you need for your car. While you're here, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.